Why Rush? Why Rush? Well, I'm Canadian. When you think of bands, iconic rock bands of the, um, you know, of, of the greats, they are one of the ones that you know everybody wants to play. They just forge their own path, and it's so unique. Nobody else does what they do, so it's it holds a special place in people's heart. I've always wanted to do Rush on Pan. You know, I grew up listening to Rush uh, when I discovered them when I was a teenager, and I became obsessed. <laughs> Well, the big picture with Pan Rocks, you know, we've done these two projects in LA, these recording projects, just to let people know the versatility and the capabilities of the steel pan instrument. You know, we did Led Zeppelin, we did Kiss, we did Jane's Addiction, we did an original, we did a Christmas tune on the first project. So we decided to do the Pan Rocks Rush. When we were in Vegas, we were hanging out and we were looking back over the original recording we had done, which was with Billy Sheen and Tracy Guns, Bruce Kulick and Stephen Perkins. And it's like, all right, what are we gonna do next? Let's do Rush. And uh, it was a much more ambitious uh, project than doing the, the rock tunes that we had done on the previous session. We wanted to stretch out and play the music of Rush on this project, just not to even build on the first project, to kind of spread it out. Say, look at the kind of music that you can do with these instruments. The first time I asked him, okay, we could do this thing, how many players can you get? He was like, dude, I could have 50 players here in like a day. Is everybody gonna fit in there tonight? Mm -hmm. For tonight, yeah. So we'll but do they we'll they all fit in there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know he's been doing this for over a decade. His reputation in the steel pan community is just, um, you know, they love this guy. A lot of the steel pan players were were drummers first, many of them, and so uh, when when Tracy, you know, thought about doing this, he bounced it off of people, and, and everybody's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. After I got Steve and Seth on board to help me arrange the tunes and for them to chart it out, I reached out to the pan players who did the first pan rock session because they were the first ones and took a chance with me on that. Every pan player from Pan Rocks Project LA except for two came to do this one. And I wanted this one to be bigger. So I started inviting other pan players that I was like, man, I, these are ringers, they're gonna be able to play. I know they're gonna like Rush. This, music, this one's gonna be a lot more challenging musically and it's just gonna be a lot of fun. I assumed that it was an existing orchestra or whatever that, uh, you know, play together and, you know, go to a school together, but no, they're coming from all different places. So the fact that Tracy can organize that and, and make it all come together, is, it's fascinating. When I talked about doing this with Tracy, I said, well, who do you think we should have on drums? And he said, I think Portnoy would be perfect. I am Mike Portnoy and I'm here to play drums. Pay tribute to my hero, Mr. Neil Peart. The key to the whole project is we have to find a drummer that can do Neil Peart's licks. It, it, you can't not have the best drummer available for that or you'll just get murdered by Rush fans. Rush fans are the most uh, critical fans on earth, which is great when you have them in, in your corner, but when you know they're listening and watching, you gotta, you gotta get it right, you gotta nail it. I knew Mike. We had done Bonzo Bash together, and then I played with Billy Sheehan and Mr. Big, and Mike and Billy had been playing together for years. So uh, we knew each other, and I reached out to him, and, and he loved the idea. When, when I first heard about it, I was intrigued by it, and I was like, you know, is, is this going to work? What's this going to be like? What's it going to sound like? Then I watched uh, the, the video of what they did last year, and then it made sense. He was ready to go right out of the gate, which was awesome. And then, you know, for me as the producer, I'm like, okay, we got our drums. Now, let's build on top of that. Leading up to the project, we were still looking for a bass player, and I mentioned it to Matt. I was like, Matt, man, I think Philip Bino would be perfect. He, I met him, he was the coolest guy in the room, and if he plays with Steve Vai, he's gonna have to know how to nail the rush stuff. Getty has a very specific thing where it's very precise, but I wanted it to have balls, too. I've known Matt from the Whiskey Jam for a good while, and uh, they ended up needing a bass player, and I guess since I've played with, you know, Vi and Planet X and Derek Trini and all these, um, I guess, math rock kind of bands, they figured I could come in and, and, you know, have a lot of fun playing this. I'm Pete Thorne, guitar player. Pete's just one of those guitar players that can play anything. We're playing some Rush music with some steel pants.
pleasure to watch him work. We actually stayed late one night just to overdub some parts because he just wanted his parts 100% correct. So he stayed late on his own dime, and you can hear it on the, on the records. I thought it was just going to be guitar, bass, drum chair last night playing. And it was the whole deal with all the steel drums and stuff. And it was really, really fun. I think we all had a great time. Totally interesting. I guess that's our cue. Thanks, man. Time to rock. You bet. It's going to be fun. Yep. Rock! Beginning with Pan Rock's Rush, we knew this was going to be a challenge, just musically. Yeah, playing Rush is a lot different than what I'm used to playing. I saw the, you know, I saw what they did last year. Uh, I saw that footage, and and I couldn't believe it. And now this is taking it to a whole nother level musically, at least in terms of the complexity of the music. We have to get this right because everybody knows how it goes. I had to rehearse some of those runs so many, so many times and just like all these different crossovers and double strokes and stuff. It's just, yeah, it was a whole different ball game than last year, let's just say that. And I think probably individually, I know when I was practicing it, it was so frustrating when I would do something wrong because I'm like, know how this goes, I should be able to do this. You know, I've always been like, where, where are my licks, you know? Why, do, why didn't the bass get the licks? Um, but now that I've got this music, I'm like, okay, here they are, <laughs> like, here it is. Yeah, uh, for about two months straight, we probably put about eight, six, eight, ten hours a week of, of rehearsal time, whether that's personal or, you know, together as a group, as there were a bunch of us in the same area. Yeah, I had to sit down and learn the songs, but I've also listened to them for most of my life that I can remember, you know, so, that, so it's in there somewhere. It's in our musical DNA from the time that we were kids. You know, the professors that wrote out the charts did a great job, and then the guys and gals that played it, they crushed it. When we got into rehearsal night, and we ran through the first tune, Tom Sawyer, and we played it as a group like we had played it for a year, I was just kind of like, are you freaking kidding me? Those two and a half days could not have worked without, without everybody being so prepared. Yeah, I can't say enough about the band players their spirit, their personality, their dedication, and their willingness to be a part of something like this. And even like the last one, there's, there's like a family happening here. It's rare that you could find a band of three or four or five people that immediately connect. But to do it with a room full of like 40 people and immediately be locked and tight and, and feeling an energy like that, it's, it's unheard of actually. It's, it's pretty incredible. It's a force, it's a, you know, it's a force of nature. And it's also one that you don't, you know, you don't come in contact with. I've played with, you know, with 30 guitar players. I've played when it's been five drummers and all that stuff. I've never played with a single steel drum pan player, much less an orchestra of them. So to see 40 of them in sync, playing music, playing harmony, playing melodically, um, you know, having all the instruments covered, it was a real, real nice surprise. Once they had it, it was there, and that, that's the beauty of these, these guys. They, they know their instruments, they know their music, they know, and they're on. It was a sigh of relief for me, because, you know, my whole life is invested in this. You know, this is, isn't just a project for me. My whole life is thrown into this, and it has to work. And every time you do a project on this on this magnitude, you're literally on a tightrope, and it could fall this way or it could fall that way, and it could literally just fall apart. And when we went through that first song, and everyone was so jazzed about it, and then to see the look on Mike Portnoy's face for him being in the room with all of those steel pan players at the same time, and him about to crap himself, they are all so tight. Even their movements and their excitement and their energy was tight. That was like, all right, we're on to something because he's he seen everything. And that was the first time he had ever done that and it blew him away, along with Pete and Philip, because I don't know if they really knew what they were getting themselves into. I was under the impression that I'd come in and it'd be a band and one steel drum player. I thought it was some one guy's dream to play Rush on a steel drum. But then I walked in here and it was kind of a symphony of them, so that was a little overwhelming to say the least. Everybody's like laughing and dancing and smiling and grooving. There's just an energy that's like just indescribable. It was like a big 50-piece garage band. I'm really glad that I was able to 
interact with them. I gotta warn you, you're in the spitting zone, man. That's, that's like the exact. I'm not, I don't wanna get weird, but I'm okay with this. Rather than just coming in here, cutting drum tracks and never even meeting anybody or playing with anybody, I'm really glad we got to play together and break the ice and, and I got to see that whole energy because it was really inspiring. I was introduced to Steel Pan through Panorama. A lot of people are introduced to steel drums through like island music and just like pretty music on the beach or Margaritaville. I was introduced to Steel Pan through 120 piece steel drum orchestras out of Trinidad that are 110, 120 decibels acoustically. So when I first heard those, to me it just sounded like rock music. We're capturing the audio that I've always heard in my head that I want this, these projects to sound like because it's never been done before. So we're achieving that. But you have to see what we're doing as well because if you're listening to it, sometimes you don't even know what you're hearing. Some people don't even hear steel drums. They think they're hearing strings because it's orchestra. I would say playing with a symphony orchestra, that was that would be my comparison. It fills the room in the same way as the string orchestra or a horn section or anything like that. It's, but it's, yeah, it's just a different it's just a different texture of orchestra that we're not used to hearing in, certainly in rock and roll. You know, we want to give them a peek into our world, the steel pan world. We know it, we've been doing this for years. Yes, you're, you're doing music, but you're also a visual product. You need to exude this joy that you have playing this instrument, and you look around this entire room, and it's happening. There, there is no need to, hey man, get into it. We are into it. So it's like, you have all these people that are of the same mindset that this is, this is badass. It's this really musical flowing togetherness. It's the, the pan orchestra just comes together as one thing, is very much one sound. We recorded everything in two and a half days, which thinking about that seems insane. But that's my job as a producer, to take the budget and then the tasks and get the right people involved and pick the right studio and the right engineer. And so we've got technically the right environment so it's going to sound right it's going to feel good for everybody and then also there's a logistic of um, dealing with you know 45 human beings matt's a great producer he, he sits down and listens to something and knows where it should go i think matt has a really great ear for rock and roll i can just count through the whole like, right. the click yeah uh you got an extra pair of sticks yeah he just knows what he wants to hear and has like any great producer, it has the confidence in what he wants to hear being the right thing. The reason I love Matt being a part of Pan Rocks is that I'm coming from the steel pan community and I've recorded a lot of steel bands and know what I want to hear, but it's nice to have a separate set of ears like Matt's who's in the rock and roll world who wants to hear it the way he thinks it should be. And then me and him always come to this nice little compromise and it turns out exactly the way we would want to hear it. I've always wanted to hear a rock and roll treated as an orchestra, so to have that big sound. So some of my favorite records are guys that approach recording rock bands like that. In the case of Rush's music, it's, it's very complex. You know, it'd be one thing if we were here just doing big open, you know, Zeppelin or Sabbath jams, but when you're playing Rush's music, it is so intricately woven. Uh, you, you know, you need, somebody's got to play the leader. This project was by far the most challenging project that I've ever done. Oh, Tracy's the man. I mean, he, he definitely, um, he's Mr. Cool when I think, you know, a lot of times it's probably like 17 fires that he's got to put out, you know. Steel bands can be kind of a Russian dragon. And he's, a number of things could be falling apart around him, but he's just like, hey man, let's go play. I don't know, that's, that's a really rare quality to have, you know, because I mean, I know a lot of people would, would easily crumble on the type of pressure that he's under on, on a daily basis. So I'm blown away by the, uh, you know, the amount of uh, details that are involved with something like this. And I just like having the more the merrier instead of just a couple of hand players. If I could have a thousand hand players every time I played, I just want to be a guy in a steel band. But the steel band that I want to be in is a rock steel band. So. I'm kind of the leader of that because I have to put it together, but as soon as I put it together, I just want to be a dude in the band. Everybody knows who Rush is, so that's the cool part, but letting people know what the steel pan is and what it can do and, and all the different ways that it can be used. If I can reach a half a million people with every video that I do with this pan rocks and this medium that we're doing, then I have the privilege and the honor of 
opening a door to say, look, there's a whole art form that you don't even know about yet. You know, this is a, a cool, cool thing to be a part of. Um, not only because it's something that I've never done before, I've never played with a, a pan orchestra. Uh, obviously, this is a first for me for that, but it's also a, a fun thing to be involved with just because I love Rush so much and I love Neil so much that, uh, you know, it's always uh, always an honor to, to take part in anything that's gonna pay tribute to those guys. It was incredible, it was like being back in, I was in band in junior high. And it was like being back in band, like, oh, I'm part of this great big ensemble all of a sudden. That was unique for me, you know, like, it, well, it was unique, but also familiar. I was like, oh, I remember what this is like. When we just get in the room, it's just, it, there, it's just magic. I just, I wish these sessions lasted a month. You know, it's kind of like Star Trek plus rock. You know, it's got that, it's got that super fandom happening, which is, um, it's great. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so awesome. I've never heard that. That's crazy. That's that's really good.